what does the Lewis symbol for sodium look like? It's been mentioned a bunch. How many dots does it have? But the the electron dots, sorry, how many dots does the it, it will have zero, but before it has zero, it has one. Okay. So the electron dot for sodium, and this is atom, if it has a charge, and I get that a lot, how do I know if it has a charge? I have to explicitly say. So the absence of any charge here or saying ion tells you it's the atom. So a sodium atom has an electron dot with diagram of one dot. And you know that because it's in the first group. It's an alkali metal. Okay. It can react with iodine. How many dots does that electron dot diagram have? Gentlemen with the red mask and seven. And how did you know that? You're right. It's in group seven. Okay. So it's the seventh over. The down doesn't matter, it's just seven group seven over. It's a halogen. So it has and when you have this combination of something with one or two dots, with something missing one or two dots, you get a uh, ionic reaction, an ionic bonding type of reaction, you get ionic compounds. To identify this in science 10, you're going to see this as a metal plus a non-metal. Okay. Next year we'll tweak that a little bit. Okay, but this is a this generalization works 95% of the time. You have a metal from over here with a dot or two, with a non-metal from over here with a dot or two. And these guys are going to get robbed, and these guys are going to be our stealers. And what happens, you've got iodine missing one. It's going to take that one from sodium and pull, put it there. Sodium gets an octet because it's gotten rid of that one electron in the third energy level. So then its second energy level is left full. And iodine fills up the one missing spot. So you end up getting sodium plus with no dots and it's stabilized, and you get iodide minus. Okay? I'm writing plus here because it lost an electron. It lost something negative okay? and became positive. The iodine was neutral. It gained an electron, so now it's, no, so now it's minus. I'm used to in chem 20 and 30, we don't write the ones. In science 10, we write them in as a reminder. But next year, we'll stop writing the ones, and that's why I left them out by accident. Okay. Now, I'm going to complete this electron dot diagram. It now has eight dots. Okay. You don't have to color code them, but I'm... Okay. And then I have to do something else to the electron dot diagram of that iodide. Yeah, you have to put the square brackets around it. And I guess I have to do it around this ion also, even though it has no dots. So no square brackets when they're neutral. You put the square brackets in once they become an ion. And all your electron dot diagrams for ions either have no dots or filled with dots. Okay? Both of these now have an octet. They're stable. You saw calcium, how unstable it is, how reactive it is. And then you saw all the group ones, okay? This is not stable with that one dot, okay? But once it gets rid of it, and becomes sodium plus. Our oceans are filled with sodium. About 4% of our oceans are filled with sodium plus. That's really stable. Convention says not to do that. So you're thinking you should write eight. Convention for these diagrams are, Whatever energy level the atom is representing, you do the same for the ion. So because this is the third level for the sodium atom, you show the third level for the sodium ion, which is now empty. You don't switch levels in between. Okay? And you, you might say, well, why do we do it that way? It's because that's what 
groups have just decided. So this isn't a law of science, it's just groups decide how we do it and we all do it the same way and we don't switch levels between the atom and the ion. So your thinking isn't wrong, it's just not how we do it. Now, Chem 20, we really dive into this a lot more. I'm doing this so you understand when something is ionic. When something's ionic, there's a loss of electrons and a gaining of electrons, and we'll draw all kinds of these next year. We'll do, what if this lost two electrons, that could only gain one? Well, then you'd need more of one of these to balance it out. We'll deal with that next year. But there's one set of naming rules. Whenever there's stealing, okay, we're going to use one set of rules tomorrow, and that's the key message here. When they're sharing, we use a different set of naming rules. Okay? I'm going to start with ionic first, the metals and nonmetals, doing ionic bonding. When, okay? And here we end up just using charges to figure out how many of each we need. Okay? Down here, there's no charges at all. This is sharing, not stealing. So no pluses, no minuses. Again, the how we do this is more CAM 20. You just need to know the naming rules and want to start going through t uh, tomorrow. Okay? So you're not going to get tested on doing exactly what I'm doing. Okay? But you need to be familiar with that covalent bonding, the sharing is different from ionic. That you do need to have an understanding of. Okay? So every atoms are still trying to get octets, but now they're trying to share. Okay? So two electrons may be counted on the atom on the right and the atom on the left instead of one stealing and one robbing. So CO2 is an example of a molecule that has no ions. It's going to share. Okay. Carbon gets surrounded by two oxygens. And we're going to do their electron dot and then move them around and so you, show you how they get shared. Okay. Uh, how many dots would oxygen have? And you need to look down at your table. Pardon? More than two. What group is it in? It's in group six, so it has six dots. Okay. Uh, how many dots would carbon have, or what group is it in? Four. And we've got an oxygen again. I want to ask that again. Okay. And now what's govern the, governing this? Why these atoms want to share is they want an octet. They want eight electrons around it. Oxygen starts with two, four, five, six. It's missing two more electrons. Okay. And the, the stealing isn't going to work here. We don't have something with a lot and something with a little. So nobody's strong enough to rob the other person. Okay? We don't really get into this this year, but these barely hold on to their electrons, and these really strongly pull them in. So the big strength over here of sucking in electrons is so powerful, it just destroys these metals, sucks those valence electrons away. But when you have like oxygen and carbon, both of these strongly want to pull electrons. So they're forced to share because they would steal if they could, but they can't. So they have to share. So oxygen needs two more, and it ends up sharing twice. It's going to share there, and it can share two electrons there. Now the sharing is each atom gives, gives up an electron and shares. Okay? So imagine you and your friend want to get lunch. It's $10, so you share. You each put in five. These atoms are going to share. They're each going to put in an electron. Okay. Over on this side, this oxygen is also has two, four, five, six, and needs two more. So it's going to share twice. Those electrons pair up and share, and those electrons pair up and share. We find out that the sharing always comes in pairs. Okay. Again, this is something you're going to do more in Chem 20. I'm just trying to introduce covalent bonding. You're going to learn how to name these, why I use carbon, why I use this prefix. That's what you need to learn. Next year, you'll start doing this yourself. You are not putting these together this year like I'm doing. Okay? Just naming. So I need to redraw this. 
oxygen only is sharing two of its singles, two electron, the pairs, those two pairs didn't share. But here we've got one, two, three, four sharing. And I'm going to draw those between the atoms. Those electrons are going to get shared on both sides. Here we've got two, four sharing on this side. And these dots never get shared. They just stay on oxygen. Okay. And by this sharing, everybody got eight electrons. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight. This oxygen has eight electrons around it, okay, which stabilizes it, which fills up its outer energy level. Okay? But it does it by sharing. Okay? This carbon also has eight around it. Okay? This carbon is sharing four and sharing four. And in total, it's got eight around it. Last, we get this oxygen, and it also has an octet. Two, four, that it always has, and four, that it's sharing with carbon. So all the atoms ha now have octets. Okay? This is the heart of covalent bonding when you share. It's very different from ionic bonding when there's stealing a robbery. Okay? And again, tomorrow we'll start naming. You don't use any prefixes here. We just use the charges to tell us how many of the positives and how many of the negatives we need. So we just name the two pieces. So they're a bit simpler. Okay? Down here, there's no charges. We, we just have to somehow tell the reader how many atoms there are. So you're going to see all of these prefixes show up. Di is telling the reader that there's two oxygen in the sharing. So again, don't worry about putting this together. That's a next year thing. Just learning these naming rules is, is it. Okay. So that's the material I wanted to go through today. I've got some more practice for you to do and uh, you're set for your first day.